is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And I'm always looking to have people who are going to challenge you, and they're going to support you, they're going to help you be at your best so that we can really work smarter. I think we've all had enough of working harder. It doesn't work. So let's tap into some experts that can help us to work smarter in every aspect of our life. And so I'm excited for today's conversation. Emily Jansen is with us and she's praised as a next level innovator and inspiring leader who lives to her motto, be so good that others won't forget you. And she's had an amazing TED Talk, Six Tips for Building Your Confidence, and uh, it's had over three million views. So pretty impressive. If anybody is aware having that many views is means that it kind of went viral and people are excited about this topic. So we know that you guys are excited to hear this. She's worked with Fortune 500 companies, sports organizations, national conferences, and much, much more. So without further ado, she also has an, an amazing, highly ranked podcast, Leadership in Female, And she's been featured in lots of interviews and things like that. So we're excited to get started to uh, to talk. Hey, Emily, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me, Penny. So why is confidence? Let's just like dig right in. Like why does confidence actually have an impact or value on us working smarter? Like how can we get more out of life when we're confident? Oh boy, where do I start? It is hugely instrumental in helping us to reach our goals. So whether those are in the workplace or at home in your personal life, you need the confidence to challenge yourself to exit your comfort zone and pursue your next biggest opportunity. And so many of us lack confidence. Confidence is a skill. So many believe that you were born with it or you weren't. And that's just simply not true. Confidence is a skill that you can build over time. And some people listening might say, oh, I'm confident enough. I got this. But that's wonderful to believe that confidently in yourself. But the thing with any skill is that you're not always at an A plus level, right? Even if you're the world's greatest golfer, you have a bad day, right? So these confident behaviors teach you how to continuously exit your comfort zone to grow your confidence to get through hard things and challenge your next biggest goals. I want to pop in there. There's lots of stuff to unpack and then we can continue to move on with it. So what I'm hearing you say is that it's the confidence that helps us to go outside of our comfort zone. What about day-to-day things as well? So, I mean, is it just for growth and for getting to the next level or is it also just for everyday interactions? It's for everything. It integrates into our entire life. I mean, every morning when you wake up, right, you've got this, a lot of us are using our online calendars, right? They're plugged into our phones. You're checking to see what you've signed yourself up for. And depending on how you feel that day, right, that could feel energizing or it can feel like, oh, I'm not sure that I'm prepared. I don't know if I'm I'm good enough. You can start this negative spiral like pretty quickly. And if you have worked on your confidence, if you've prepared to be your best, then your everyday challenges become a little bit easier. I'll give an example of like a real world scenario, right? So something as simple as attending a child's birthday party. Okay, you say you have a kid in preschool and they've just been invited to their first birthday party. And people who lack confidence could be incredibly overwhelmed by that situation. Like we are so much more tuned in to our anxiety today than we ever have been before. And new situations, new places, new people can really set us off guard. So it's important to understand, first of all, your why for this basic situation. And this can be applied to like attending a networking event, giving a pitch at work, going on a first date, running a race, like literally anything. So understanding your why. So why did you sign yourself up to do this thing, right? In the child's birthday party situation. Okay, it's important for my kid to 
make friends and see these people outside of a school environment. So maybe that's the number one piece of your why. Maybe you also want to understand and get to know the parents so you know who your kids are hanging around, right? So that's another piece. You're like, okay, now I know why I'm dedicating three hours of my Saturday to like going to this thing that I maybe don't want to do. Once you get there, you've got to remember those pieces as well. Like this is why I showed up. So rather than standing in the corner on your phone or passively just engaging with only your kid, like you're getting around the room, saying hello to people, meeting those individuals and making like a useful time out of this experience. And it takes confidence in yourself and knowing your why in order to do that. That's so interesting because we've heard connect with your why and how important it is to achieve your goals and, and to push yourself. I think it's a really interesting aspect of how it can give you more confidence. But, you know, now that you're saying that, I can definitely connect that because A, we become more connected with ourselves and it connects us with others because very often our why just isn't about ourselves. It's about Mm -hmm. something bigger. And then we can get outside of like what's in our way and our our mind. Like, you know, I don't know these people. They're going to judge me or whatever might be happening. So it's, it's a really interesting aspect. And I think we do have strategies that are cross contextual and work in some areas and then can work in others. And this is a great example where I hadn't thought of that, but I can see how that would strengthen somebody's resolve and confidence in stepping into. Yeah, exactly. And what happens afterwards is what's so important. You went and you did that thing, whether it's a networking event or the birthday party or the pitch, you survived and you're more adaptable after that, you're more ready to do that the next time, which makes you more confident that you can succeed in those situations. So it's all about getting out there, getting those reps, understanding why you're doing it and helping that to build your confidence for the next time you're engaging in a public situation, you're at that networking event, you're giving that pitch, you've you've survived. The thing is, our brains like to keep us in this comfort zone. And inside this comfort zone, if you don't leave it, over time, your confidence can shrink. It can retract. And you have to continue to push yourself and get uncomfortable in order to understand what you're capable of. And that grows your confidence. And there's lots of research around what more confident employees can do for their businesses and yeah. also what more confident people can achieve in their life. Yeah. So we're building a muscle. And, you know, it's interesting, like when you say it's to make us uncomfortable, to me, it feels like it's actually what makes us comfortable. And I mean, so I think that one could look at it in either way, right? Because as we step into that and we connect with our why, I think it makes us feel more comfortable in why we're taking action. So I guess it's all in the perspective that you're looking at it. But of course, stepping outside your comfort zone builds resiliency and confidence in that way Mm -hmm. to continue to do that. So that's very interesting. You said you had a couple of skills. So stepping into your why and connecting with that is one of them. What else can people do to build that skill? Yeah, well, I'll give you a great behavioral tip. But before we jump in, I wanted to say a little more about the discomfort piece. So getting uncomfortable leads to comfort. Then you're in comfort again because you've grown. Right, it's a cycle. Yeah. And then you go, yeah, exactly. So you're sort of going through this cycle of discomfort to comfort, discomfort to comfort. And the reason I wanted to reiterate that is just so that your listeners and can understand that is completely normal. I think sometimes we don't give ourselves a break to say like, gosh, like, why does this keep happening to me? Like, why do I keep having these feelings? Or why is this so hard? We're all feeling that way. Okay. Anytime you got to push a little bit harder, it doesn't feel great at first, but then you learn a little bit more ease. You get more confident in that situation and then you grow. So it's completely normal. And that, that leads me to the behavior. So how do you get into that area of discomfort. It's really hard. Like I give this example a lot of times. I was formerly, I was the general manager of a AAA baseball team. So if you know anything about baseball, major league baseball, and then you enter the minors, AAA is the highest level of affiliated baseball. And I was the GM of the team. And as a woman, they're used to seeing guys in the clubhouse, on the field, like leading in these organizations. So things were greatly uncomfortable for me at first as I was showcasing like what I could do and how I could lead this team. And there's this one instance where uh, we were about to start a game. It was televised. It was a Thursday night. And 
I had, it was, it was probably like the third game in the, the series. So I had met the manager of the opposing team. We had kind of gotten into the groove, right? The home stand was going off without a hitch, but I came down from my office and I was standing on the concourse and I watched the opposing team exit the clubhouse and they were wearing a uniform color that matched our team. And if you know, even the basics of sports, teams have to wear opposing colors. So right. you know who's on what side, right? Yeah. Uh, even in baseball. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I like, I really want to pretend I didn't see that and go back up to my office and maybe nobody will notice. But I was like, man, if I want to be the GM that is a leader and who stands up for what's right and what's true to the game, I got to talk to this guy. So I went down on the field and I could feel my heels like sinking into the dirt on the warning track. And I looked at him and I said in my head, three, two, one, go. And as soon as I hit go, I started walking towards him and he saw me. So there was no like right. swift U turn. Yeah, exactly. And so that counting the three, two, one, go got me started and the momentum kept me going. And I had that uncomfortable conversation. I learned after that situation what I could do to prevent this from happening in the future. I learned that I could confront these situations and I would live through it, right? It grew my confidence as a GM in that operational side of the business. And there's a reason why we count down, right? Three, two, one, go. Because if we say one, two, three, you could say four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're going to keep going on and on and on. And there's something about a countdown. And I love the sports analogy because a countdown is used all over, sports, right? You count down and you go, the game starts or you count down and the game ends. And there's this urgency to get the thing done. And you can use that tactic to get through and engage in those difficult situations where you'd rather turn on your heel and run back up to your office. So the next time you have to have that critical conversation, enter a networking event with cheap beer and warm wine, but there's a person that you need to meet, three, two, one, go, head right in, right? You can't allow that space to where that self negative self-talk or whatever can creep in. I see it like if you don't have a countdown, what happens is it's like, you know how a rock hits a windshield and it just makes that first initial little thing. And if you don't catch it, it starts to splinter in all different directions, right? So I kind of see it like that, like your self-talk and and stuff can get totally out of hand if you're not staying clear on what it is that you want to follow through with. 100%. So yeah, it's in that moment. So that's a great tip, a little brain hack. It reminds me whenever I hear that Mel Robbins talks about the five, four, three, two, one. So the five second rule. So very similar time type of thought. And I like how that sort of, it makes me think of a rocket launch, right? It's ready to go, like do that thing. So I like that as an action packed tip for people to do. Mm -hmm. What do you find is the biggest challenge. So people get caught up, like, let's take somebody, like you said earlier, somebody might say, well, I'm confident, right? Maybe also we're confident in certain environments and not in others in some contexts and not others. So how do we play with kind of that is is not to get caught in the I'm confident trap, like, and then Mm -hmm. not prepare ourselves for those types of situations where we're not? Yeah, I see it all the time. I mean, when I go out and speak, I talk to, I'm at a convention or a corporate event or a women in group, and the room is filled with leaders. These people have achieved a certain level of success in their life and in their role in the workplace. And they should be celebrating their success constantly. They should be supporting those around them. They should be feeling like they can take over the world. And they do in some instances. But every single person lacks confidence in some area of their life. It's universal. And what I find is that when I'm speaking to these people or when we're talking and we're kind of diving into confidence, like they start to think about the areas in their life where they're not as secure and begin to think about like, what would happen if I addressed that? Like how much farther could I go if I thought about and worked on those limiting beliefs? Could I get to that next level? Could I have a stronger connection at home with my family? Could I learn to say no and use my vacation time? Like, how could it affect my life? There's so many different implications for that. And it is universal that we are not 
wholeheartedly confident 100% of the time in 100% of the situation. So my challenge is, and it's hard, right? Is to think about like, what are those areas in your life where you don't feel as confident and what would happen if you worked on it? I'll give a great example just from my, my personal life. So I was raised in a small town. My family was super hardworking. My dad was a blue collar guy. But he had like 10 X his life from, li- from growing up in poverty. My mom as well. We were in a small town. We had a great life, but it wasn't like, wasn't flash, right? We weren't at that level, like nowhere close. And I was taught my whole life, save, pinch your pennies, like, my money from my birthday cards was rolled up in my sock drawer, <laughs> you know, for like I would spend a dime. And so I had all these like limiting beliefs around money. I would try just not to spend a lot. And I never looked at my, my expenses. I knew what the money was in my bank account. I just tried to make it incrementally larger. And I was not confident when it came to dealing with and understanding like what my money could do for me if I paid more attention. And it wasn't until I had this this like breakthrough moment with my husband. He was like asking me some questions about finances. We were trying to get things squared away with our different investment accounts. And I like had a break. I was like, I can't talk about it. I like freaked out. And I'm like, why did I do that? Why did I have that reaction? And when I really allowed myself to think about it and get uncomfortable, I was like, oh, like I have no confidence in money. Like I don't know anything about this. So it's time to get curious and explore a little more and build my confidence, ask some questions and get really uncomfortable. And I did. Like I have spent a lot of time getting more comfortable with finances and how to grow money, how to create wealth, like what to do in these situations, like all of this, all because I recognize like, man, if I don't do something about this area, like I'm going to stay here forever. And I'm going to only think about how I should just save my way the success and not open up my ideas on how I could grow in this department. I think that's just a great example because I'm sure as I'm talking about this, people's lack of confidence might not exist in, in the finance arena, but they might be thinking like, oh, I really have that feeling about this. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that when I started to work on it, right? You get, okay, three, two, one, go, Emily, open up the credit card statement and see where you spent your money. Open up whatever your banking and investment app is of choice and like read some of the blogs (laughs) that they're putting out and understand what could happen with your money. Okay. All right. I learned a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to take that information and I'm going to talk to somebody about it. I'm going to talk to my friend about it and start to build up your confidence in these areas where you're lacking and see what happens. It is wild uh, when we... We can excel in those areas we're really good at, but but what's sort of feeding into that, that if you did a little bit more, like, could you get on that rocket ship? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's important that we dig, you explained it, like when you realized, why did I react that way? I kind of, I kind of call these things reset moments because it makes us so hyper aware. Is that me? Why did I act that way? And then you got some new awareness and a new mm-hmm. perspective from it because you were able to allow yourself in the moment in a way to reset, to, to take on a new perspective. So I wrote down something for myself. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say on that, but it triggered something that I wanted to ask you. Is there anything else that you want to say around that piece? No, let's go. Let's go. Okay. On the next so what, yeah. what came up for me is you mentioned something also about work and you said the ability to say no, like not work on vacation because this is your time. Right. And I think that's a huge problem where people don't have confidence. So you've said if there's one area, right? So for some people it might be finances, for some people, it might just be their need to please everyone else and not yeah. to say no. So I'd love that we just kind of open up that conversation a little bit and give people some tips on how they can be more confident in saying no and holding their boundaries and being confident in the boundaries that they set Mm -hmm. and to set them. And so I'd love to hear what your thinking is on that. Yeah, absolutely. That's hard. It's really hard because if you're someone who's an achiever and going after your goals, you've got to the point of success in your life and with your family because you have said yes, right? You've said yes to promotion. You've said yes to extra work. You've said yes when they asked you to move and take on a new role. Like We've been built in this capacity to say yes and accept more to achieve Mm -hmm. more. So when you're asked to then, hey, you're at this level or let's flip that switch and you actually have to start operating with no, 
Like, how do we do that? Right. So do you think it's so, like a certain level? Like you have to say yes to a certain point and then you just need to recognize where you need to start saying no. I do think that early in your career or when you're starting something new, you have to open yourself up for opportunity. And that means saying yes. And in those opportunities is where you can build your confidence to be better at your job, better managing your employees. Like you have to do the work in order to have the privilege to say no and the privilege to set those boundaries. And I'm talking about like in the workplace, like there's plenty of personal boundaries that you shouldn't be right. setting your whole entire life. So I'm speaking specifically that trajectory inside the workplace, but there's a certain point where you get to this level where you're in charge, or maybe you're managing a group of people or you're running the company or you're in a leadership role and you have to start flexing your no. And this is incredibly important because you have a very valuable skill set. And if you're asked to spread yourself too thin, the reason you got to where you are, that circle of genius is going to be deployed, like let's say 20% of the time and 80% of the time you're going to be doing all this other stuff. Well, you got to where you were because you have this 20%. Like what if you could flip that and do it 80% of the time and 20% do the other stuff? So you have to think about a boundary around your skill sets and what you've been hired to do. Learning to say no to the extra can give other people opportunities. So when you have a hard time with yourself, like I always recommend making it other focused. So if I say no, what does that mean for other people? Okay. Mm -hmm. If I say no to this project, but I can give it to this junior on my team, what can it do for that person Mm -hmm. to work more independently? Or if I'm on vacation and I say, I'm not taking meetings I'm putting up my out of office. I'll talk to you guys in two weeks or whatever it is. Team, this is what I need you to do while I'm gone. I have the confidence and the trust in you that you can get it done and go. Because staying no like that, what does that do for your team, right? You're not micromanaging. You're not checking in. You're not skipping all of the tasks in between and then micromanaging when a decision's been made, right? You're letting them do the work. So there's ways that you can start to use no and set those boundaries that are beneficial, of course, for you, but also beneficial for the people around you. So when you're having difficulty with those boundaries, think other focused, right? Think about the other people and what your no could provide for somebody else. Awesome. I love it. It is. It's so true that it's a win-win. It really is when some of those should be easy no's, right? Because Mm -hmm. we're holding on to it and it's really a benefit to somebody else for us to let go. Absolutely. For us too. So, (laughs) yeah. So what didn't I ask you? Because we're coming to the end of the show. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you really feel is important to share before I give you a chance to share your your details where people can reach you. Yeah, of course. So in the last year, I have been working on a book, Let's Go, A Guide to Increasing Your Confidence that comes out in May this year. And when I'm the one behind the keyboard or behind the microphone giving the advice on confidence, people think like, wow, must be nice to have all that confidence. (laughs) And I just want to address to the audience that like, I still use all the strategies that I talk about. Like writing a book was totally getting outside my comfort zone. Every time I get on stage, I still get nervous because I care. I care about delivering for the audience. And there's a difference between caring about what people think of me. Because if I, if I cared all the time and worried all the time about what other people think, it's really hard to grow your confidence. You're never, ever, ever going to please everybody. My nerves and sometimes my confidence starts to waver when I'm like, man, you know, I really want to deliver. Like, this is really important to me. It's really important to them. I want to make an impact. Can I do it? And I use those strategies to say, hey, yeah, here's how you get out on stage. Three, two, one, go. Remember, yeah. reflect back on all the success you had before. On the last keynote that made an impact, you've made these talks before, like you've practiced, you've put in the work, you know, you can do it. I'm still using those reminders to pop myself up. So it's totally normal that we're not going to like get to one level and stay there forever. And that's why it's important to know these skill sets, like what I teach in the book and what I talk about on the Leadership is Female podcast. So where can I just wanted get to a hold of you? Because we're, we're coming yeah. to the end of time. Yeah, it's emilyjansen.com. So Emily, E-M-I-L-Y-J-A-E-N-S-O-N.com. It's the same name on social media and I'd be so delighted to connect. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. And thank you all for being here. All you need to take away is 
one or two things, one or two areas that you can work on that you can say, let's go, right? Three, two, one and plow through it and use some of these, you know, connect with why you're doing something so that you can stand in your confidence, right? We heard some really great strategies today. So build your confidence. Your confidence is going to be the basis of your personal growth, your professional growth, and even the depth and meaning in your relationships and in your life. So go to it. My name is Penny Zinker, and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.